Hey everyone, welcome to the 56th episode of Podcast Demastered. I'm Chelsea and I'm here with Wade. And today we're excited to discuss the latest TV show and the MCU, Miss Marvel. It just finished up its sixth episode run on Disney+. Plus. Now, where to begin with the show? I mean, Wade, how would you describe Miss Marvel, the TV show? <laughs> Well, okay, so I know, like, at the beginning, when the trailers um, initially came out for the show, you know, it was very um, high school drama, like, Disney high school show. Mm -hmm. um, and at that time, I was like, yeah, like, that's fine. I, too, grew up in the 90s and 2000s. That I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, after, like, the first, like, one or two episodes, it really, like, takes a left turn and departs that area. Um, and you get a lot more out of out of the show than just like high school drama. I, th I I've like reading on TikTok and and online everywhere. I know tons of people have enjoyed like you know all of the the family dynamics going on and how like everybody in her family has something to do with the show. You know, mm -hmm. they're not just ever in the background. They're like a part of her life, um, along with her friends, but mostly her family. Um, which is also a reflection on her family's culture and stuff like that. Um, and it was it was so cool to see those things explored like in the MCU. I definitely agree. And to take it a step back, I just wanted to mention that Miss Marvel is about Kamala Khan, who is a teenage Muslim Pakistani American girl who lives in Jersey City. And as you know, it goes through superhero stuff. Mm-hmm. Her, like, uh, journey to becoming a hero is just, like, it's so good. Like, it's not anything, like, earth-shattering and, oh, my God, I've never seen that before. Just everything they put into it um, for Kamala Khan is just so good. Like, if you know Kamala from the comics, I'm sure there's there was lots of things that you, that you saw that they brought in from the comics that you loved. And if you've never heard of Kamala before, surely you still loved it. I mean... Now, I know there's a lot of people who were, like, not about the show, um, but that those are usually people who have felt the same way about Phase 4 across the board, which is a whole other conversation. But I don't think there was anything about Kamala's show that I was just like, man, they could have done this a lot better. Yeah. Well, I would, I would kind of dive into the, you know, I have been a little bit just kind of burn out this whole phase. I've just been a little kind of like... Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to watch the next thing and then I kind of eventually do and then I'm like, okay, I saw it. Nothing new there. <laughs> but with Miss... <laughs> I know. And with the last like show I remember watching was Hawkeye, which is when we got to introduce to Kate Bishop and everything who fits that whole like teenage kind of category type thing. And I was like, oh, oh Lord. Her character was just uh, for me. And then... Yes. <laughs> and then we go into Miss Marvel and I'm like, okay, they're really trying to at least, you know, when they, like you said, they originally presented the show as more of like, you know, a teenage type drama high school thing. I'm like, okay, I think I could be here for the show. I think I could go into this. It's a different like mindset than all these other Disney plus uh, Marvel shows we've seen where it's a lot more adult like or characters that have already been previously established and you get a little bit more about their backgrounds. So I was like, okay, let's go into it. And I'm like, oh, wow, that first episode was great. I'm ready for more. Like, it's, this is probably my, I'll just say, it's my favorite Disney plus Marvel show I have watched to date. It has been so good just to, like, ingest the whole time through. Like, I need to, like, go back through and just watch it all, like, in one sitting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just, like, the style of everything, like, in episode one and two specifically, where they lean so heavily into, like, the animation, mm -hmm. like, the Scott pilgrim is of it all. Um, just really, oh, my God, that's, 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 like, the attention grabber. And then by the time, like, the plot really settles in, they don't have to rely on those things anymore. Because, like, you're like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Yeah, I definitely agree. Like, that was just, it was just something so fresh to see in a show. And just to see that just made it more engaging. And I feel like it kind of fit in with, you know, the first couple episodes, more of her, like, her hope to be a superhero. And she wishes she had power. So it's kind of leads into that fantastical elements, just adding the animation and stuff. And then, like you said, they kind of, mm -hmm. you know, go away from that because it's more of, like, those fantasy 
elements almost become her reality. So it's more grounded in reality, even though it's still superhero-y and magical. Oh, yeah. It's going to be like real life Jersey, but like through Kamala's eyes. Yes. Which is going to be a mess. (laughs) (laughs) But it's a fun mess. (laughs) It's a very fun mess. Yeah. Anything Kamala does in the comics is always just like, she brings that level of like, um, real person idness to it, but like also fangirl <laughs> because you know, like Kamala in the comics, the biggest fangirl, uh, Kamala in the Marvel's Avengers video game, even more of a fangirl. <laughs> and they translated that into the MCU like so well as well. Like it was just, it was so great to see her like geek out mm-hmm. Um, on all of her Avengers trivia and stuff like that. Like them going to Avengers Con. Yes. <laughs> I was just like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> it's like, we could really relate to that. She is such a big fan of what we all enjoy and she's a part of it. And I think with this show, not even just her character itself, that was just a, such a joy to see on screen. I think the writing in general, like every character was really well thought out really fleshed out we got to see like you know i feel like on some of the shows we've like some of the marvel shows it's kind of like the main character you know a little bit more about but like we get to see who her brother is her parents all of her friends and it makes it so it's it is kamala's story but at the same time it's everybody else's story too we get to peek into everybody else's lives as well Mm mm-hmm well, like, and you, you just get that huge, that huge um, feeling of community. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. which is extremely relevant to her culture and stuff like that. Um, and I think they just did such a good job. Like, <laughs> like any time uh, Bruno was on screen and he was, like, showing knowledge of her culture, like, to her parents. And they were just like, oh, Bruno. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, Bruno. <laughs> oh, Bruno. <laughs> like, he's such a good boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Kamran showed up. And I, and at first, so at, so it, I thought Kamran's character was going to be um, a specific character from the comics, um, but he wasn't. But kind of he was, like there is a he the character that I don't remember if it's if Kamran is his actual name in the comics, but he, a guy just like him shows up, um, you know, and I he was her her cousin you know like Mm -hmm. he shows up and he's just like oh like i'm so cool and i really want to like show you all the cool people things which of course makes bruno jealous oh yeah even in the comics (laughs) um and stuff like that she's like yeah i'm gonna hang out with you but then it turns out oh he's an inhuman oh he's working for the royal inhuman family oh shocker he's kidnapped kamala to take her to them because they want her to work with them Mm. because she's inhuman and she belongs with them and she's just like you're bad people and she runs away um i thought he was gonna be like that and he still kind of fit the role you know um not in the same exact way because the whole inhuman thing but um no it was really like the second he showed up i was like uh i don't know about you like your trouble (laughs) because he was yeah because he was kind of immediately he was mirroring that character from the comics who at the time i only had like a vague um memory Mm, of mm -hmm. i was like i can't remember what happens to him in like the next episode i was like oh there it is i remember now (laughs) yeah he's a very interesting character i'm curious i want to see more of all these characters after this because this was only six episodes i think these episodes were really well done i thought they all had a purpose all at a place but I'm like, I need more now after I've, I've been, I did, I did pretty much binge it all. <laughs> Lucky you. Well, at least I binged like the last three episodes, but I did watch the other ones roughly when they came out. Oh, that must have been a roller coaster. Oh, it was. And I was kind of glad that I was able to watch them all back to back. I'm like, no, I can't be left on this cliffhanger. I need to know now. <laughs> I'm looking forward to see like, like the next time we see Kamran. I want to know, like, where, where are they going with his character? Because based off of what happens mm-hmm. at the end of the season and what we learn about Kamala at the very, very end, I'm just like, I don't like I don't know what's going to happen with him. Because right now yeah. he's kind of showing the same powers as Kamala has. Um, so, mm-hmm. like, are they going to, like, change and adapt into something more unique to him? Or are they just going to continue to be, like, explosive and all over the place? 
Is he going to learn how to control it? Things like that. I'm interested to see where that goes. But even like Kamala's next appearance, like I'm pretty jazzed about that too. So <laughs> that can't get here fast enough. We have to wait like over a year. For isn't it like next summer or something? Yeah. So she'll be in the Marvels, which is I think the current release date is July twenty eighth, twenty twenty three. Oh, jeez, Louise. Yeah. Because I think the Marvels just switched places with uh, the Ant-Man movie. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, so we would have gotten a little bit earlier, but now we have to wait just a little bit longer. <sighs> but I'm looking forward to that movie even more so now after watching this show. I just am excited about all the characters in that film. Man, Carol, Monica, and Kamala. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a lot of Marvel, and I'm here for that. Yes, holy crap like even just like they can make a monica movie Uh and i'd be all over that because like showcasing her like they did in at the end of wandavision Mm -hmm. um and then her not being in doctor strange like i thought she was going to be you know i kind of thought she was going to be no she's out there she's i don't know what she's doing god knows but but like even like at the end of kamala's show uh it shows her her bracelet activate Mm -hmm. and we actually you know we see her her switch places with carol so we can only assume that poor baby kamala is somewhere out in space (laughs) on some other planet in the middle of something (laughs) probably and just like uh... in the middle of something indeed (laughs) Yeah. yeah um so you know she's going to like well yeah you know carol's gonna have to like freak out attack and try to get back to the planet but, like, is she going to run into Monica before that happens? Are they going to go there together? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Speaking of the end scene, though, just when Carol realizing where she's at. And I feel like that has to just be, like, she's, like, has to be, like, in a horror movie for herself. Just, she's everywhere. <laughs> she's just looking Blaster. around the room and it's yeah. just, like, Captain Marvel posters everywhere. And she's just like, oh, no. Oh, God. Like where am I? No. Nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> Not the fact that. Something happened and I've left the situation I was previously in, but like, I'm somehow in a place that is worse. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I look forward to seeing her, like Kamala's parents' reaction to that. (laughs) Unless, of course, Carol just goes zooming out of the house. I mean, she could just go through the roof, I guess, but I don't know. We'll probably still see the parents looking off or something like, who was that? (laughs) I need some, I need some Kamala mom and dad freak out time about that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean that was just yeah speaking of the parents just i loved yeah like we've already said like seeing more of them in the show you got to know more about her parents and i think it was really great that we got to see a lot of uh like mother-daughter relationships in this very much so yeah yeah and mm-hmm. that really helped to carry the story because it's like the whole they were like they were sharing this experience Mm-hmm. But only Kamala, at least for a while, only Kamala understood the the, the major mm-hmm. implications of of their moments and stuff. But like, you see it on the mom side too, and it's just like it's just heartwarming. Like every even like when Kamala was in trouble, you know, mm-hmm. like the way her parents reacted to those things was just like, oh, like I love them. Yeah. <laughs> it's also just so refreshing because it's a younger superhero who actually has like her whole family there and they're Mm -hmm. all supportive of her and it's fun to see that and refreshing because amazingly i'll get obviously spoilers nobody in her family dies like none like her parents and her brother do not die in this show so she actually has a whole family yeah (laughs) i was a little nervous at one point i will say but i'm glad (laughs) they did not die and that you just get a whole wholesome family And it's, they get to go on that journey with her becoming a superhero. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, and it really seems in the MCU, they're, they're really trying to not care so much about the, um, the masked identity thing, you know, um, at least like with (laughs) the people around them, you know, like, Mm -hmm. did everybody know that Peter Parker was Spider-Man? Well, not for a while until, you know, the whole thing happened, but like, did the people closest to him know and, and then nobody outside of that? Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be the same thing with Kamala. You know, her her closest people know, and that's that. You mm-hmm. know, so secret identities are a thing, but only so much. And, like, I don't think there's any other hero besides Peter and Kamala that have anything close to a secret identity in the MCU. Yeah. Because, you know, like, when Kate Bishop becomes more of a thing, I don't 
really see that. That's not going to be a secret identity thing. I don't think she'll want it to be. <laughs> no, she's going to ride no. that wave. <laughs> yeah. Now, and, and even if we get, if we continue to get the rest of the Young Avengers, that's still not going to be an issue. Depending on how we get, like, Billy and Teddy, maybe, like, meh. One of them's a damn alien, like, you know, I don't know. But none of them are secretive people, really, so, at least in the comics, so. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't mind it, though. It's fine. It, it helps the story move forward. You don't, they don't mm-hmm. have to worry about keeping things a secret, and, you know, it allows the family to have more interactions and things like that. More honest reactions to things. Yes, that's true. Honest reactions, yeah. And not poor Aunt May bumbling around a whole movie, not knowing that <laughs> Peter is Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor yes. Aunt May. What's interesting about the show, too, is that it has so many of those lighthearted elements or anything like, you know, the teenage elements, a teenager becoming their own person, figuring out who they are. But it also talks a lot about Kamala's history, and her family history, and it delves into a lot of darker parts of real history, too, which was really interesting, because Mm. the big thing that the show covers is partition, which is something that I wasn't very familiar with before watching the show. Same. I'm in the same boat. I didn't learn about any of that in school. Mm -mm. And so when they started talking about it, you know, like after the episode where it came up, I was like, I never heard of that. And I went and immediately did a whole bunch of research on it. And it was just like, whoa, like I I knew I knew bits and pieces, like the relationship between Britain and the Middle East and stuff like that. But I didn't uh, I didn't know a lot of those major specific things. Yeah. And I think that I mean, I'm clearly an outsider perspective looking in on this show and I don't have the experience of having to deal with that. But I think it did a really good job of explaining it as best it could in a show like this for people who were not familiar about it. And it definitely, yes, I also, you know, wanted to research more and did look up more about what partition was and everything. And it just, I, I'm really big into history. I love history. And I also obviously love superheroes and the way that the story was told and how everything came together just made it even more impactful to me. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I love seeing fictional works use use history to its own benefit like that. You know, mm-hmm. like working in real things and having real effects within like the fictional realm, whatever that might be. Um, so it's it's so nice to like see that. Yeah, and it's almost like using it as a way to let more people know about these important parts from history too. Mm-hmm. Well, there's I know there's one major thing coming out of the show. Um, at the very, very, very end of the show mm-hmm. um, that we haven't touched on yet. Well, no, I get, no, I don't think we've really touched on it yet. No, not fully. Um, no. And that's what Bruno um, reveals to Kamala at the very, very end, um, where she says that her powers don't come from um, her, her, her bangle. They were already there, almost as if her powers were a mutation and that she was a mutant. And then the X-Men theme plays. And then the X-Men theme plays. <laughs> That's two times in 2022 a MCU product has used the, <laughs> used the X-Men theme. <laughs> it's like they're heading in a direction or something. It's like they're teasing something, <laughs> yes. Hmm, interesting. Um, but how do you how do you feel about, about Kamala may or may not being the first MCU mutant? Honestly, like, it doesn't bother me that much now i think i don't know if i specifically mentioned early at the beginning of this episode i didn't know much about kamala before watching the show i only knew who vaguely she was in the comics and i knew that in the comics i'm pretty sure she's actually in in human yes yeah so and then i had heard that the show was going to take things in a little bit different direction her power is going to be different and everything and i was kind of like eh, i guess we'll see how it goes but i mean i wasn't heavily invested into that because I hadn't read any of her comics, so I just kind of went into it with an open mind. And so then after, you know, because the whole show kind of goes through that we didn't quite touch upon like what she's, her history is supposed to be, the clandestines or something. Yeah, which um, as far as I know, isn't like, is not a comic thing. 
you know, so like her being a clandestine or, you know, slash being a djinn. Um, oh, yeah. Which I think was more of a cultural reference than like like a comic established things. Because these aren't things that I've heard that have come up in all mm-hmm. of my comic reading. And maybe maybe there are things. Um, I'll have to go look it up. Maybe, maybe I'm just completely ignorant of the fact. Um, but yeah, so like in the MCU, she was, at first it was like, oh, you're you're basically like an interdimensional alien. Like mm-hmm. that's kind of how it was. Like your ancestors came from this other realm um, and have been stuck here this whole time. And, you know, up to your grandma and your mom and you, when we just want to go home. But then they find out, well, going opening that rift into the other dimension would would basically cause both dimensions to collapse more or less like the gen dimension would would eat up our reality mm-hmm. which would cause like instabilities and explosions everywhere and stuff like that um but yeah so it, yeah. It, it's a really cool maybe just a cultural reference maybe maybe it's a real comic thing i'm not yeah i'm not for sure either if it really is with the comics or not if i think it was paying into that culture reference and then with her horror of being considered like a gen or something like that and being mm-hmm. like no but then it kind of yeah twisting and seeing well it's slightly different now as for the reveal at the end i just at first i thought it was funny to be honest because i was like this is the absolute cheesiest part of the show right now is this like last end scene <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was Absolutely. like this was this was like filmed last second this is what i felt like they were all of a sudden like okay this is what's really gonna happen we're gonna do this little tease to set things up and i'm like okay whatever so honestly at the end i was like is this for real okay well i still love the show so that's that's where Mm -hmm. i left it and and i think yeah that in that scene where she does mention about like oh it's just another label like she doesn't really care and i'm like yeah i mean that's kind of what i agree with it like kamala who she is is really cool really fun character and I don't really care or I'm not really worried about what she's being labeled as because she is Miss Marvel now and she's going to do what she wants to do as a superhero. And yeah. Cool and, and you know, that's, that's really how she is in the comics too. Like she's an inhuman, but like she doesn't really do anything with the inhuman. She's, you know, she's an Avenger. She doesn't really, she'll, she, she, she deals with the inhumans when she has to. But, like, mm-hmm. she doesn't really do anything. She's not a part of their culture or their identity or anything like that. So, I, you know, I didn't really think it mattered either, like, what she really ends up being. Um, and, you know, we hit that scene at the end, and I really just kind of wrote it off as a joke. I was just like, oh, Kamala, you jokester. Like, I dig <laughs> it. It's fine. Um, but, then, but then later, I, I was reading around online, and um, several things popped up. One... Um, they were like, no, and Marvel was like, no, like she is like jokes aside, she is the MCU's first mutant. And, and I was just like, oh, okay. And then, um, and then the, the actress who plays Kamala, she did a, uh, ask me anything on Reddit the other day. Mm. Um, and I read through that thing for forever. She had, she's hilarious. If you've never like, <laughs> she's such a, like a Gen Z millennial, like she knows she knows things she she knows humor um but she they they asked like well how do you feel about being like how do you feel about being the first mutant and she's like no like we're we're extremely pumped about it um apparently the original creator of miss marvel uh wanted her to be a mutant but kamala's origins came up around the time that fox's fox's nonsense was happening um Mm -hmm. you know like when marvel's like fine we'll just push the inhumans really hard um and we won't make any new new stories for the mutants or for the fantastic four because we don't we're not going to give you any more cannon fodder for your nonsense that you're trying to do well she came up about that time and the original creator wanted her to be a mutant they're like well let's make her an inhuman because we're trying to we're trying to head in that direction and i get you know she was okay with mm-hmm. it it's like okay that's fine but she's like over the moon apparently that at least some iteration of kamala gets to be a mutant well that's really cool then yeah so but i think i feel like the mcu kamala is going to be just the same as the comic kamala where um it's not going to matter a lot what she truly is because she knows who she truly is because you know and she'll be more on the avengers side of things and stuff like that so i don't i don't think it matters a whole lot but 
if this is how they want to start doing it and branch off from there, cool. Like, okay. Feige's had a plan to introduce mutants for a while now, so he said it for a long time, and I've just been waiting to see what he wanted to do with it. And I guess this is... I guess is Although, like, claiming her as the first mutant doesn't really explain, like, where the mass mutants come from. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> you know? Um, so maybe that's the story that, like, we need to pay attention to. But God knows when that'll be. Ten years from now. <laughs> maybe. Well, I don't know. Um, have you heard about the uh, recent, uh, like, Marvel casting leakings? I've heard about some of them. I'm not sure which ones you're referring to. Um, have Have you seen the, the one for Charles Xavier? Or who, who, like, Marvel wants to be played by him? Yes, I think I remember seeing that one. Um, I can't remember the guy's name, like, at all. I never remember the actor's name. But it's the guy, it's the, uh, what's his name? Stan Edgar, I think, from The Boys. Mm, uh, mm-hmm. Like, who runs the company. He's in Breaking Bad. He's in, like, he makes such a good villain. <laughs> like, very professional, formal villain. Um, and at the end of the day, isn't that what Charles Xavier is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least, yes, like, lately. Yeah. <laughs> In the last <laughs> 10 or so years. <laughs> you think he's the good guy, but yeah, when you really think about what he's doing, what he has done, it's a little mm-hmm. sketchy. You keep pushing stuff like that, and then Cyclops shoots you in the face, so, you know. <laughs> 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 then you are the villain. Yeah. Then you are the villain. Cyclops becomes the villain by killing the villain. His yeah. villain, anyway. <laughs> I think it's just so surreal, though, of having the MCU and the acknowledgement of mutants and having it been like like teasing or saying that, you know, Kamala is the first mutant, whatever first actually means in the situation. Mm -hmm. And it's something I've been so nervous about, though, in the MCU. Like, I absolutely love the X-Men. I love the mutants. But it's always been hit or miss for me with the movies in general that have been made over the years. And I've, of course, been really partial to, like, the... The animated shows so mm-hmm. just seeing what's gonna happen has just been nerve-wracking and it's just very i don't know just i'm not sure what to expect yeah i agree and i think that's how a lot of people feel like we've had like more or less like two x-men universes <laughs> so far and they've you know two uh mixing of results and feelings on the matter um mm-hmm. but within the MCU where basically everybody has every character has entered into the MCU as such a positive version of their self, you know, like a good, a good Mm -hmm. reflection. Um, People just want, they want the mutants introduced. And while they want it right now, they, they want it done right so that we don't get a third questionable appearance from them. Like we'll say that way. Yeah. And I totally get it. Like, I totally get it. But and with the mutants, though, like, there's a lot of people. Oh, it's not even like different X-Men. people. Yeah, yeah. It's not even like mm-hmm. there's a lot of X Men. There's a lot of X Men groups. There's mm-hmm. a lot of mutants who have never been on an X Men group, who have only been on, you know, on the Avengers or um, in, in, in other things with other people. The X, you know, the mutants are not kept strictly to X groups. So it's, I just, I want them to have fun with it, but I want them to love the characters. Mm -hmm. And I want to see new mutants. I want to see ones that haven't gotten much. Not the movie new mutants. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you could bring those mutants in. Yeah. I mean, if I, we get Ileana back, magic. Oh man. (laughs) You mean they even the girl who plays Ileana, they could bring her back. Like she was a really oh, heck good. Yes. She was a great magic. Actually, mm-hmm. most of the most of the cast for the new mutants movie I felt was was pretty strong. Like the plot was here and there. Yeah. But the yeah. casting I felt was really it was quite good. I agree. But um we'll really just have to see. Well, and we've already seen the MCU excellent casting already, so I definitely mm-hmm. I'm not worried about who they're going to cast. I'm just nervous just about what to expect from the mutants in the MCU. Yes. We need to have, like, smaller stories first. Yes. Smaller. We don't have to jump straight back into the Phoenix or Apocalypse. (laughs) Please don't. Please don't. (laughs) No, I don't need another questionable interpretation again. (laughs) Mm -mm. 
Mm-mm. No. Give us Just give us some TV shows. small yeah. If if they could if they can make like um like a Disney Plus show that introduces if even if they want to just go like here's the Xavier School, if they wanted mm-hmm. to have a Disney show that just focused on the Xavier School and a a good yes. big handful of the mutants that they have there, give it a core cast of course, but like you know make it more than six episodes, <laughs> really make spread it yourselves seasons. out. Yeah, multiple for every seasons. Every year for us. No. <laughs> you can just introduce more and more and more, and then. Like, that show can be the home of the mutants for a while. And then, like, you can take these two or three mutants and toss them into this movie. Like, we know where they came from. Good. Another movie? Here's two or three more. Like, I really feel like the X-Men is more of a more of a show origin, you know, mm-hmm. than a movie. Yeah. Because they don't have to have some ridiculous level villain for a show. No. They can start with smaller ones. You know, they can be tracking Mystique or something. Yeah, or just, you know, the idea, because it's still a school, so there's still going to be drama between people. So it's just interactions (laughs) between everybody there. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, and the show could be a great way to also just kind of hint at the things that are going on outside of the school. And then that's the way they Mm -hmm. can bring the characters out into the movie is by being like, you know, this is also happening at the same time. Because... Honestly, I don't know when some of these shows have even happened in the timeline at this point. I'm just enjoying what they are. It's all kind of here them. and there, yeah. Yeah, so. But that's the way that a mutant-type show could do that. Agreed. So that's what we want. Agreed. <laughs> Which it's we kind of, of are going to get an, an X-Men show soon next year when they're kind reviving of. the yeah the 90s animated show. So I'll be curious to see if that plays a part in anything. I want to see, like, well, it's supposed to, like, go straight off from, like, the original 90s show. Mm -hmm. So I want to see a trailer. Like, I want to know what that means. Like, is it a direct sequel? Like, are they literally picking off where the last episode left off? Or are we getting, like, you know, 10 years in the future? Yeah. I need to know these things. (laughs) I know. Yes, I have so many questions about that show. Yes. (laughs) Brain needs to be. (laughs) But as for Miss Marvel... Kamala Khan yeah like we said so she only had that six episode series but we're not gonna see her again for another year it's gonna be a long year My yeah goodness. but plenty of other Marvel stuff to keep us preoccupied during that time so we have next we have She-Hulk yes yeah which I know there's the whole thing with CGI going on right now um I feel like that conversation is way above my pay grade um <laughs> Um, I love Jen Walters. She is freaking hilarious. So as long as the show is like courtroom superhero sassiness, like that's all she needs to be. That's what I want to see from the show. Yeah. That, and, that's, and we've got Jamil in there as, um, oh no, what's mm-hmm. her name? Um, oh, I forgot. I forgot the villain's name. Oh my God. But Jamil's in there as her and I love her. I could watch uh, The Good Place like just continuously nonstop because of her. So we have we have She Hulk, which is pretty mm-hmm. soon, right? Like, it's uh, all things I think it's considered August seventeenth. Oh my God! So before school starts for me, okay. Um, and then the movie, the next movie is is it Black Panther? Yeah. In like November something, and that one has been a mystery really for quite since a while. Then. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Since then, um, I know now. Like it's set to introduce. Like we're gonna be introduced to Ironheart in this movie which totally fine with Riri Williams you know like I want I love to see her see her there and you know she's gonna get her own show later yeah um mm-hmm. and then we're also gonna get Namor mm, like did, have that. you seen yeah. have you seen the promotional artwork for what Namor's supposed to look like no I haven't apparently oh my god I'll have right to now. I yeah. go ahead go ahead I want your reaction live <laughs> for this um, My reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just MCU Namor promo. Okay. Let's see. You have to like share your screen with me so I can see. I can be like, oh, it's that one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see it? It's told everyone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think it's this one. <laughs> Up to the top. On the right. On the right. On the right. This yep, one. It's okay. that one. It's that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. Like I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. i'm so excited and it's there's great. there's a version that shows his full body too <laughs> he has the wings 
Oh my god. He has the wings on his ankles. And so and this is this is silly internet drama, but people are like really they were being themselves about um him not being white. <laughs> and your face tells me everything. <laughs> Yeah. Like he's from Atlantis. He's the king of Atlantis. Did you think the people of Atlantis were white? <laughs> not weren't. everyone's white, guys. Yeah, not everybody's no. <laughs> white. Um, but no, even like in his, you know, his costume is so like Mayan and Aztec driven. I love it. I love it so much. So like, if we're really getting like a proper uh, Atlantis versus Wakanda movie, that's gonna be bonkers. Mm-hmm. Because people who don't know much about their relationship in uh, the comics, if other superhero, super-powered people did not exist in the world and it was only Wakanda and Atlantis, Namor and Black Panther would fight to the death on their front lawn every <laughs> single day. Um, they do not like each other. Mm-hmm. They're frequently only stopped from fighting because other people will step in. So, you know, this movie won't really have Black Panther, not necessarily. But the relationship between their two countries is quite aggravated at all times of the day. So I'm very interested in seeing how this this goes. Yes. Frankly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Goodness. This is basically turned into a mutant episode at this point. <laughs> With I mean, reason. in a way, it kind of <laughs> always was, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> we might be heading towards another X-Men episode. <laughs> Um, yes <laughs> yes of course there's always room for another x-men there's episode. always there's always more yes. mutants <laughs> listeners i hope you are looking forward to us talking about more mutants in the future please let us know <laughs> please please let us know what you want to know about them too like yes like you want to know characters you want to know stories you want to we need to talk tea or something like gossip about the mutants like we can do it all <laughs> yeah we can do exactly it all. yeah we can break down those movies too if we need to. Oh, the TV Lord, shows. Oh. <laughs> we'll give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> what they want. <laughs> yes. Yes, we've definitely talked a lot more about mutants and everything, but for people who have not watched Miss Marvel, I know we did cover a lot of spoilers in this episode, but I think if you haven't seen the show yet, you need to just give it a try. It's only six it's episodes absolutely long. Worth and it. yes, and it's a blast. If, if you've been feeling some MCU burnout, I really still suggest watching this because it might help. Because this is pr- it's pretty different than what you've gotten. Like, is it a little more juvenile? Yeah, but, but that's a lot different than a lot of the other MCU stuff. Um, so give it a shot. And if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, and speaking as somebody who has been feeling that burnout, please go watch the show. <laughs> this will be a joy There we you. go. Yes. There we go. Well, I think that's going to do it for our episode about Miss Marvel and I think so. all mutants. More mutant talk <laughs> down the line, you know. Bring back Dazzler. So... Dazzler for life. <laughs> yes. And with that note, yeah, so let us know if you want us to talk about maybe Dazzler or anything. And so, you know, we're located on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Pod Demastered. Feel free to chat with us there. We can talk about Miss Marvel and let us know what you think of the show. You can also uh, be sure to send us an email at demasteredpodcast at gmail.com. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen to this podcast. And just let us know what you want us to talk about next. We're open to suggestions and we will read your feedback and we can, we're here for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to chat more. We'd love to chat so much more. Yes, we would. So once again, thanks again for listening to this week's episode, and we hope you tune in to the next one. 